So this machine here is called a signal generator. And what it does is it generates a signal, as the name would suggest. So what we can do is we can adjust the frequency of the signal, how strong it is, also called the amplitude. Then we can send this electrical signal to a series of different devices. The first one I have over here is just a large loudspeaker. And what I can do is I'm going to set this to about uh, 5 hertz. So that means every second there are going to be five cycles. Okay, so that's close enough. And as I increase the amplitude, what you might be able to see is that the speaker cone moves in and out five times per second. Okay, now at the moment we can't really hear anything because at this frequency, five hertz, is below the threshold of human hearing. So what we're going to do is we're going to increase the frequency and when we go to 50 hertz, you can really hear that sound. Now at the moment, it hardly looks like anything's moving at all, but I guarantee this is actually moving up and down 50 times a second. If we take some particles, this really shows the movement of that coil. I'm just gonna turn the amplitude down. So the way that a loudspeaker works is that we've got a permanent magnet, we've got a coil of wire, and then this signal is either going to be going one way or the other in the wire, and that causes the cone to move in and out. And obviously we can adjust how many times that moves in and out per second using the frequency part, or we can adjust how much it goes in and out by using the amplitude. In actual fact, anything below 20 hertz, we can't really hear as part of the normal kind of human uh, range of frequencies. So 20 hertz, anything below that is infrasound, but anything above that is an audible range of sounds that humans can hear. So it goes from about 20. Now, as we start to increase the frequency higher, we get a higher pitch sound, but it gets to a point when we can hardly hear the speaker anymore. Now you might be able to just hear that, hopefully the microphone can detect it. But basically when we get to these higher sounds, our ears haven't evolved to really um, hear them that well because it's something we don't actually come across that much in everyday life. But as we go higher and higher, suddenly there gets to a point where I can't really hear the sound anymore. And the reason for that is that I have quite old eardrums and that means they're not as flexible as yours and that means they can only flex back and forward so many times per second which means there's a certain higher frequency that I can't detect. In actual fact um, as you get older and older, it's harder to hear these really high sounds. But when you're younger, you can probably hear them, and hopefully the microphone's just picking that up. And this continues until we get to a point when suddenly you can't detect the sound anymore. And above 20,000 hertz, so that's 20,000 cycles per second, humans can't hear this sound anymore. So humans have a range of hearing from 20 to 20,000 hertz. Anything above 20,000 is what we then call ultrasound. And there's many uses for ultrasound. So that's kind of what's happening with the sound wave. But why do we have them in the first place? How do we detect them? Well, effectively what we have is something which is generating a signal here. The electrical signal is sent through to this loudspeaker. And what it then does is it starts to move back and forwards. As it moves back and forwards, it causes all of the air particles which are just in front of it to all move backwards and forwards as well. And then what we have is a mechanical longitudinal wave. Mechanical, because we need physical particles to pass it on, which is why we can hear things on Earth, but we can't hear the sound of the sun in space because there are no particles in space, or there's, it's almost a complete vacuum. So we don't get the sound of the sun um, actually affecting us. If we did, we probably wouldn't be able to hear me at the moment. Um, and actually, it's a longitudinal wave because all the particles are moving back and forwards in the same direction as that energy transfer. So it's a longitudinal wave. In actual fact, uh, in air, the speed of sound is about 330 meters per second. When you go to things which are denser, uh, like liquids and gases, the particles are going to be closer together. And that means it takes less time for, the, for them to pass the vibrations onto the neighboring particles. And in liquids and gases, we have a higher speed of sound. So, this is how we generate the sound, and if I just put that carefully over there, how do we detect it? Well, humans use our ears. So here we have an electrical signal going to something which is moving, which is causing the signal. And I guess in a way the opposite happens in sound inside our heads. So we've just got uh, 
our ear, the outer part kind of channels the sound in. It comes down here and then it causes the eardrum to vibrate back and forwards. Now, this can only vibrate back and forward so many times per second, which is why we have an upper limit to what we can hear. And as people get older, they get more, uh, well, they get less flexible. And that means these things start to toughen up and that means they can't then flex back and forwards as quickly. But what we're doing is effectively this thing here, it's moving back and forwards as the sound wave comes in. It uh, then passes the signal through a series of bones to the auditory nerve. And this then converts that mechanical movement into an electrical signal, which it then sends to the brain, and then our brains interpret what that noise might be. So this is very much what's inside our heads. And again, all we're doing is we're taking this mechanical longitudinal wave, this is vibrating, it passes the vibrations on, converts it to an electrical signal, which our brains then interpret. So that's inside the ear, and that's just a little bit more about sound waves.